United States Air Forces finally admits that the secret SR-72 is real and it's ready for its inaugural flight. The technology field has evolved considerably over the years, going beyond what was once thought imaginable. Advanced weaponry, once seen only in science fiction, like aircrafts flying at extreme speeds in the outer atmosphere, is now becoming a reality. The SR-72 Dark Star is notable among these new aircrafts, which has attracted attention with its capabilities and strength. So, what makes this drone stand out? What are its features and how is it going to change the world of aviation forever? Join us as we delve into the features of the SR-72 Dark Star as the United States has admitted that it's not only real, but they have finally developed it and it is ready to take its first flight. Stay tuned as the details of this incredible aircraft will leave you scratching your head. History is an exceptional teacher that imparts lessons lasting a lifetime. One crucial insight is the undeniable importance of speed. If subsonic falls short, supersonic suffices. And if supersonic isn't enough, hypersonic unquestionably is. This lesson spans centuries and a few decades back, it transcended being just a teaching. It became the determinant in the Cold War rivalry between Washington and Moscow for global dominance. In such competitions, information reigns supreme and espionage becomes routine. Thus, the United States devised the ultimate spy, one so adept that it remained invisible to both radar and the naked eye. It was named the SR-71. Moving at previously thought implausible speeds, it could outmaneuver missiles with ease. However, the United States didn't just stop there. The United States Air Force aimed to develop a fighter jet capable of secretly flying at unthinkable altitudes with unimaginable speeds. This ambition led to the creation of the powerful SR-72, commonly known as the Blackbird. The SR-72 project was initially unveiled in 2007, with reports indicating Lockheed Martin's development of a superfast aircraft designed to reach speeds over Mach 6, exceeding 6,400 kilometers per hour. Although concrete details have not been officially disclosed, leaked concept art and compelling information have surfaced over the years. Despite rumors and leaks, the United States Air Force has neither confirmed nor denied Lockheed Martin's engagement with the project. The official authorization for Lockheed Martin to proceed with a prototype for consideration is also unclear at this point. However, Lockheed Martin has publicly acknowledged their involvement in the SR-72 project with plans for a prototype to take flight in the near future. The objective is a hypersonic, efficient drone for exploring remote areas, backed by Lockheed Martin's advanced technology. The previous model, SR-71, made its first flight in late 1965, and it became operational a year later. Despite initial criticism of in-flight refueling, it became standard practice. The SR-71 consistently surpasses Mach 3 and often maintained this speed at an altitude of thousands of kilometers above the ground. This unique feature earned it the record for the world's fastest manned combat jet. Ultimately retired due to reduced Cold War relevance and advancements in satellite technology for information gathering, the SR-71 left a significant mark on aviation history. In 2007, there were reports circulating about Lockheed Martin's work on an exceptionally fast aircraft called the SR-72. This fighter aircraft is believed to have the ability to travel across the skies at a speed six times faster than the speed of sound, which shows just how fast this aircraft is. The initial details about the SR-72 became public through a publication named Aviation Week and Space Technology in November 2013. To create the optimal engine for the SR-72, the company overseeing the fighter jet's development has collaborated with Aerojet Rocketdyne since 2016. The unique engine is designed to enable the jet to travel at high speeds seamlessly. Lockheed Martin also plans to implement a unique mechanism called a turbine-based mixed cycle for combat aircraft. It's like having two engines, a turbine engine for lower speeds and a scramjet engine for higher speeds. The turbine engine operates initially when the jet is moving slowly, and as it accelerates, the scramjet takes over. Both engines share the same inlet and nozzle, but have separate pathways for air they use when fighter planes fly at high speeds, such as Mach 5 and above. The air enveloping the jet becomes intensely hot, 
which causes certain metal parts to melt. To tackle this challenge, developers have considered using specific materials, known as composites, to construct vital components of the jet. These composites are created from materials like carbon, ceramics, and metals. In May 2015, the plan for the SR-72 was to employ it for high-speed intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR, and strike operations. However, decisions regarding the specific items it would carry, referred to as payloads, were pending. This is likely due to the fact that the aircraft flying at Mach 6 at an altitude of 880,000 feet would necessitate payloads larger than the norm. Achieving this would require the development of additional sensors and weapons specifically designed for the SR-72. Existing weaponry limitations make it impractical to effectively engage this high-speed, high-altitude aircraft. This indicates the need for innovative weaponry capable of handling the velocity and altitude of the SR-72 to ensure its efficiency as a reconnaissance and assault platform. In November 2013, there were plans to build a scaled-down SR-72, which would be operable by a pilot or autonomously, and its construction was planned to start in 2018. This smaller demonstrator, about 60 feet long and resembling an F-22 Raptor, aimed to incorporate a full-size engine for a brief burst reaching Mach 6. Following the construction, a performance evaluation via an airborne test was necessary. To align with the High Speed Strike Weapon Initiative, testing was scheduled which emphasized the need for concurrent progress in both projects. The focus was on constructing this more compact SR-72 in order to ensure that it met expectations in advancement. The anticipated SR-72 size is smaller than the SR-71, but it exceeds 100 feet in length with a comparable flight range. Reports suggest that it will be operational by 2030. It aligns with the US Air Force's goals for a high-speed weapon by 2020 and a reconnaissance aircraft by 2030. While the concept of a smaller version is smart, Lockheed Martin lacks independent financial resources. Discussions with the government for project funding have yet to yield a positive response or the necessary funds for the SR-72 construction and testing. On November 13, 2013, General Mark Welsh expressed interest in the impressive speed capabilities of the SR-72. The idea of an aircraft flying at extremely high speeds intrigued them when they considered its potential to minimize the enemy's response time in critical operations. With the possibility of other countries developing advanced fighter aircrafts, the United States faced challenges, especially in times of crisis. This led the Air Force to contemplate the development of new systems like the SR-72, aiming to surpass older aircrafts in combat performance. Despite the current inability to build a full-scale SR-72, maintaining a competitive edge and possessing cutting-edge technology for national security remained a priority. In 2013, the United States Air Force chose not to invest in the SR-72 project, redirecting their support to the Northrop Grumman RQ-180, a more discreet fighter aircraft. The RQ-180 was favored for espionage missions due to its perceived cost-effectiveness, speed, and easier design and construction compared to the SR-72. NASA then paid Lockheed Martin around $900,000 in December 2014 to explore the feasibility of developing the SR-72's engine using existing technology. This funding supported a research project examining the practicality of combining a traditional turbine engine with a unique low-speed ramjet, known as a dual-mode ramjet. Previously, Lockheed Martin, backed by NASA, had demonstrated a method to achieve speeds up to Mach 7 by transitioning between turbine and ramjet modes. Turbojets operate up to Mach 2, while scramjets come into play at Mach 4. The ongoing research aims to create a more efficient turbine engine or a scramjet engine capable of lower speeds, similar to conventional engines. NASA is also exploring modifications to current turbofan engines used in fighter planes and experimental designs. Successful outcomes may lead to additional funding for a test version called a demonstrator to evaluate the dual-mode ramjet's functionality in actual flight. Aerojet Rocketdyne, another company, secured a contract from NASA in December 2014 to assist in the engine's mode transition. In March 2016, Lockheed Martin's leader hinted at an imminent technological breakthrough. 
This progress would allow him to build a smaller scale model of the SR-72, roughly the size of an F-22 stealth fighter, with a budget of less than $1 billion. The excitement stemmed from the prospect of bringing the SR-72 closer to reality, with the potential to achieve a high speed of Mach 6. In January 2018, another executive at Lockheed, Jack O'Banion, highlighted the role of 3D printing and computer modeling in advancing the SR-72's production. According to him, such progress wouldn't have been feasible just five years ago. There's even consideration for integrating a cooling system directly into the engine through 3D printing, facilitating seamless integration. Orlando Carvalho, in charge of fighter jets at Lockheed Martin, clarified that they hadn't constructed an SR-72 despite speculations. He emphasized their focus on studying hypersonic technology, crucial for modern weaponry development. Carvalho suggests that as this technology advances, it could lead to the creation of a reusable vehicle. With limited details on the SR-72, let's delve into the features of its precursor, the SR-71. Understanding the SR-71's traits provides insights into the significant enhancements likely to be incorporated into its successor. This reconnaissance aircraft, known as the Blackbird, operated at high altitudes and speeds for reconnaissance purposes. This aircraft, developed by American company Lockheed Corporation, gained recognition for its remarkable speed, surpassing Mach 3. Some individuals also nicknamed it the Blackbird or Habu. Typically observed from high altitudes, the Blackbird or Habu took its inaugural flight on December 20th, 1964 and commenced operations in January 1966. The United States Air Force retired in 1998, followed by NASA in 1999. The SR-71, often referred to as the Skunk Works, was the result of a specific team at Lockheed, with Clarence Kelly Johnson leading the design efforts. A total of 32 of these jets were manufactured, evolving from another aircraft, the Lockheed A-12, known for its early radar evading design. Initially conceived as a bomber variant, Curtis Lame redirected the focus towards reconnaissance. In comparison to the A-12, the SR-71 was larger and heavier, enabling increased fuel capacity and an additional cockpit seat. Unveiled to the public in July 1964, it officially entered service for the United States Air Force in January 1966. Political considerations led to the Air Force decommissioning the SR-71 in 1989 with a brief reintroduction before permanent discontinuation in 1998. NASA utilized the Blackbird for airborne research until its decommissioning in 1999. The SR-71 had a discreet beginning, served in the Air Force for a stretch, experienced a brief resurgence, and later contributed to NASA before retiring. Outfitted with specialized tools for reconnaissance missions, it featured sensors to detect signals, a ground-observing radar, and a camera during sorties. Operating swiftly at high altitudes, it reached speeds comparable to Mach 3 and 2, flying at an altitude of 85,000 feet, making it highly elusive to capture or attack. When detecting an approaching missile, the SR-71's strategy involved rapid acceleration to distance itself from the threat. Post-mission, extensive inspections and repairs were needed limiting its flight frequency to approximately once per week. Around 30 SR-71 planes were produced, with 12 involved in accidents, but none were lost in action. Upon its retirement, surveillance satellites and unmanned aircrafts took over tasks previously performed by the SR-71, being the second aircraft with stealth capabilities after the Lockheed A-12 the SR-71 aimed to minimize radar visibility through features like Chinese and inward CED control surfaces. Specific compounds on the aircraft's surface absorbed radar, employing cesium-based additives in the fuel to diminish exhaust visibility. Despite these efforts, Soviet radar technology outpaced the stealth tech, acknowledged by Johnson later. Titanium, costly and restricted in many planes, found an exception in the SR-71, constituting 85% of its framework. Lockheed opted for polymer composites for the remaining portion, aiming to manage costs. They selected a titanium alloy easier to handle, becoming softer at lower temperatures. 
This choice led to innovative manufacturing techniques now used in various airplane production. Lockheed faced challenges like requiring purified water to clean welded titanium and averting chlorine-induced corrosion from tap water. Additionally, tools with cadmium coatings were unsuitable to prevent corrosion. Contamination from metallurgical sources posed a significant issue, leading to the rejection of 80% of the delivered titanium at one point. The SR-71 featured Chinese and angular edges along the fuselage on both sides of the nose, a departure from the initial A3 design. Dr. Frank Rogers, during his tenure with the CIA front group called the Scientific Engineering Institute, discovered that a section of the sphere reflected less radar, rendering the aircraft nearly invisible. Lockheed modified the fuselage's shape to incorporate this trait by extending its sides, following advice from an advisory council. The Convair Fish design prevailed over the A3 due to its reduced radar reflection. Consequently, Lockheed integrated Chinese elements into the A4 over six iterations. The SR-71 housed two Pratt & Whitney J-58 turbojet engines, also known as the JT-11D-20. These engines demonstrated ingenuity, generating a constant thrust of 32,000 pounds. They operated most effectively when the aircraft cruised at approximately Mach 3, the typical speed for the Blackbird. In the initial takeoff phase, 26% of the thrust came from the afterburner. As speed increased, the afterburner's contribution to total thrust gradually rose until it became the sole propulsion source around Mach 3. Operating at an altitude of 880,000 feet required specialized masks, as standard ones did not provide enough oxygen. Above 43,000 feet, in the case of an emergency ejection at Mach 3, Two individuals would face higher temperatures, so an onboard oxygen supply maintained suit pressure during descent. The flight deck may undergo pressure changes up to 10,000 or 26,000 feet during flight. To manage high temperatures at Mach 3, an advanced cooling system was essential. An air conditioner with a heat exchanger lowered cockpit temperature by transferring heat into the fuel before combustion. This approach also kept the front landing gear bay cool eliminating the need for special tires with aluminum infusion used in the main landing gear. The successor to the SR-71 with enhanced qualities is poised to surpass any existing fighter plane globally, boasting outstanding features and capabilities. This next generation aircraft is anticipated to be approximately twice as powerful as its predecessor. Talk of the next gen aircraft began in 2007 and rumors about its development circulated. While some claim an autonomous plane reached the U.S. Air Force facility in Palmdale, details remained scarce. Unlike the SR-71, which stayed secret for a decade, keeping things hush-hush in the 21st century proves tougher. The SR-72 is said to boast top-tier stealth, hitting speeds of over Mach 6, making interception a challenge. It's speculated to be almost twice as powerful as the SR-70, though some suggest it could be a bomber. Releasing a targeting bomb at Mach 6 poses difficulties, potentially requiring help from Skunk Works. There's also the concern of opening the plane at 4,000, risking disintegration at such high speeds. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.